Hello and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now, lots of you guys are absolutely convinced that the theme of guilt will be the question that comes up in this year's Macbeth GCSE exam. So guys, within this lesson, I wanna show you how to craft the perfect GCSE essay on the theme of guilt. Let's say this is the question that comes up in your upcoming Macbeth exams. Now guys, the common mistake that I tend to see lots of GCSE students make when they are writing about the theme of guilt is they reduce it to very simplistic statement. In other words, lots of GCSE students tend to say things like, the theme of guilt is used by Shakespeare to show that Macbeth and Lady Macbeth feel really bad about killing King Duncan. Guys, obviously a very obvious way to discuss, discuss and describe the theme of guilt is by saying that this theme is used by Shakespeare to show that they both feel bad. However, guys, in order to access the top band marks and in order to do really well, say if this is a question that comes up, you need to go beyond that. You need to engage in deeper layers and deeper levels of analysis, okay? So in this lesson, I wanna show you guys how to craft the perfect introduction and the thesis statement on the theme of guilt, as well as your main body paragraphs for this essay. Now guys, before I get into it, don't forget that next week on Monday, I'll be running a one-off Macbeth GCSE revision class where I'll be going over model answers for past exam questions, as well as key quotations to remember for all of the characters, as well as context and themes. So let's get to it. Let's say if guilt is the GCSE question that comes up this year, what could you talk about? And how can you go beyond just making very simplistic statements about guilt showing that Macbeth and Lady Macbeth feel so bad about King killing King Duncan? This is how to open your essay on the theme of guilt in your introduction and your thesis statement. Make sure you make it really, really clear within your GCSE essay that this theme, the theme of guilt, is used by Shakespeare as a punishment, okay? Remember that guilt is presented as a punishment that plagues and haunts both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth as a result of their ambition and their lust for power. Remember that Shakespeare, the message that he wants to impart is Macbeth's guilt at first demonstrates his loyalty. In other words, Macbeth, when he first initially feels guilty about killing King Duncan, remember that he, he elucidates and sees the dagger before he kills the king. What this illustrates and demonstrates is actually his loyalty towards King Duncan. However, this guilt then plagues him and it develops into paranoia within the play once he then has Banquo killed and of course Macduff's family killed. And ultimately guilt makes Macbeth transform into a paranoid tyrant. Equally, within this essay, you also need to illustrate in your thesis statement that Lady Macbeth's guilt by the end of the play in Act 5, Scene 1, is used to illustrate her penitence, right? So she's feeling really guilty. She's shown that she's quite, you know, unhappy at all the killings she influenced. So she feels very penitent and remorseful, okay? So her guilt, when she hallucinates and sees spots of blood on her hands, this is used by Shakespeare to not only demonstrate God's punishment towards Lady Macbeth, okay, so he sends her this supernatural hallucination, but then as a result, she actually feels really, really bad for all the horrible actions she's influenced Macbeth to commit, and thus she feels penitent and remorseful. Use these words, okay, use these grade nine words in your essay. That's your opening statement and that's your thesis statement. And you're making it clear how guilt is used and of course how all the supernatural hallucinations are used as symbols of guilt. Your opening paragraph, your first winning paragraph will of course be on Macbeth, the titular character, the main character within this play. How is guilt shown? This is what you talk about, okay? So make it clear in your first paragraph that Macbeth feels intense guilt before killing King Duncan. And this intense guilt that he feels at destroying his sense of loyalty and betraying the king is illustrated through his hallucination of this supernatural dagger. Okay, remember that in Act uh, 2, Scene 1, he hallucinates before he kills the king and sees this floating dagger. And this dagger is used to symbolize the murder of King Duncan and also it symbolizes the guilt that will follow and plague Macbeth for the rest of the play. And this guilt is going to increasingly corrupt him He's going to go from being this celebrated brave general to a fallen tyrannical hero, okay? Now, after he kills King Duncan, 
we learn that Macbeth is really guilty and horrified at his actions because he realizes that this is an unforgivable sin of regicide directly against God. Now, when making this point, use these following quotations, okay? Of course, what he says, is this a dagger which I see before me? This is a rhetorical question, of course, illustrating his growing sense of guilt at this uh, sense of betrayal towards King Duncan. Equally, in this same soliloquy, he talks about his heat-oppressed brain, right? When he's seeing this supernatural hallucination of the dagger, it's coming from this heat-oppressed brain. In other words, he's feeling really, really stressed out. He's questioning his reality. That's what guilt is doing, and, and that's how guilt is impacting him. And equally, after he kills the king, he repetitively refers to sleep, right? He says, okay, I'm now never going to be able to sleep again. I'm going to experience insomnia. And equally, he wonders when he looks at his bloody hands whether... Neptune's oceans will ever wash his hands clean. And this, of course, foreshadows Lady Macbeth's eventual guilt and she herself wonders if her hands will ever be clean. For this opening paragraph and for this opening point, make sure you make it a context point. Remember that his initial guilt, right? So Macbeth's initial guilt shown through the uh, supernatural hallucination of the floating dagger. This illustrates his respect and his reverence for the divine right of kings and the notion that he knows that he's literally about to kill God's representative and as a result God is going to be angry at him and he is going to punish him okay so Macbeth feels intensely guilty at this act of regicide and of course remember that this play was being first performed in front of King James's court he's a new king Therefore, Shakespeare is trying to show the people, the noblemen who are part of the court, that if they do consider killing the king, they are going to be plagued by the same sense of guilt that Macbeth is plagued by. That's your first paragraph. Your second paragraph, of course, is now going to add in Lady Macbeth. How is she influenced by guilt and how does guilt impact her? What you talk about is the fact that at first Lady Macbeth actually is really remorseless, right? Once Macbeth comes back with the daggers, you know, he's so stunned at what he's done. He's done. Lady Macbeth actually mocks him. She feels quite remorseless at the uh, death of King Duncan, okay? So she mocks his guilt. However, you then mention how by Act 5, Scene 1, she transforms dramatically. Arguably, you can say that Lady Macbeth is the main character who dramatically changes out of all of the characters, including Macbeth, okay? Because by Act 5, Scene 1, she transforms very dramatically and hallucinates and sees spots of blood on her hands okay again the supernatural hallucination of these spots of blood show that she is losing her grip on the real world and questioning her sanity right now what you want to mention is the fact that guilt impacts lady macbeth as she goes from being a very controlling woman a very manipulative woman remember that lady macbeth is the one that controls her marriage and her relationship with macbeth at first she goes from that and guilt completely corrodes her and corrupts her and it leads her to become very insane and fearful by Act 5, Scene 1. Now, the quotations you want to, of course, talk about is, at first, how she mocks Macbeth. She tells him, once he's talking about, you know, I'm never going to be able to sleep, she says... You're being really silly, you're acting childish because the sleeping and the dead are but his pictures. In other words, these dead bodies, you know, the dead body of King Duncan. Why are you scared of this dead body? It just looks like an image, a scary image, and only children are scared of it, okay? She says it using this metaphor of pictures. However, Macbeth, who has foreshadowed that Neptune's great oceans can never wash his hands clean, by Act 5, Scene 1, this comes to full circle, okay? And she echoes Macbeth's earlier words of guilt when she says and she asks, will these hands never be clean, okay? What this is illustrating, of course, is how consumed she becomes by guilt as a result of her actions catching up with her. And of course, the guilt is demonstrated through the supernatural hallucination of these spots of blood on her hands. Equally, of course, she says the very famous quotation, which you must mention in any essay that includes Lady Macbeth's character. She shouts out and says in this acclamatory sentence, out damn spot, out I say, okay? Now with this paragraph, make it a supernatural theme paragraph. And of course, you can also tie it in to context. In other words, what you want to show is that Lady Macbeth demonstrates how relying on the supernatural not only leads to your own downfall and your eventual guilt, but equally it makes you a shadow of your former self. And of course, contextually what you want to tie it into is the Jacobean belief that Lady Macbeth was seen as the fourth witch because she went against her nature as a woman by being really ambitious and obviously goading and manipulating Macbeth into killing the king, okay? So of course this guilt that she has is God's punishment on her for her ambition. 
Now your final third paragraph, you finish off strong by mentioning and discussing the consequences of guilt. How is guilt shown within the play? How does it impact both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth? So mention the fact that even if Macbeth and Lady Macbeth become powerful, they both become king and queen of Scotland. Actually, their guilt leads them to lose control of their realities. They lose control of themselves, right? So they become the most powerful people in Scotland, but then as a result, one of the consequences is they develop guilt and this leads them to lose control of their own senses of reality. And of course, the marriage also crumbles, okay? Now, what you want to mention is that guilt actually affects Macbeth and Lady Macbeth quite differently, right? Whilst Macbeth actually grows really, really paranoid and he turns it, he turns his sense of guilt against others, okay? So he goes on this killing rampage. He, uh, you know, his deep sense of guilt leads him to kill Banquo, to become even more paranoid after that, and then kill Macduff's family. So he turns his sense of guilt outwards and punishes other people. And this is what leads him to become very tyrannical. Lady Macbeth, on the other hand, her sense of guilt leads her to turn this feeling and this sense of guilt inwards. And of course, she ends up committing suicide because she can't live with the guilt of what she has done. The quotations, of course, you want to first mention when it comes to Macbeth, when he's speaking to Banquo's ghost, he tells Banquo's ghost, never shake that gory locks at me. Of course, what this is illustrating is uh, Macbeth's sense of guilt uh, develops and evolves into paranoia, okay? And also he uh, gradually loses control of his sense of reality. Contrast that with when Lady Macbeth realizes in Act 5, Scene 1, that what's done cannot be undone. And then ultimately later on within Act 5, Satan also says, the queen, my lord, is dead. Okay, so once she turns this guilt inwards, she can't live with it. Okay, and then she ends up committing suicide. And what you want to tie this into is the corrupting effect of ambition. Remember that Shakespeare was trying to use this theme of guilt and the supernatural hallucinations of guilt, which are used to symbolize guilt, okay? To demonstrate the corrupting influence of ambition. The lust, the greed, and the desire for power will ultimately lead you to become a shadow of your former self. And ultimately it will lead to your demise after God punishes you at first with guilt, okay? So that's really it when it comes to how to write a grade nine response on the theme of guilt. Start off with this thesis statement, then talk about Macbeth, as well as Lady Macbeth and the consequences of guilt. I hope that helps and thank you so much for listening.